um, I was in Paris last week. I thought I might uh, share a little bit of that experience with you because this thing is about fashion and stuff. And what I did was mostly about fashion. Not everything, but mostly. So um, on my day off where I could do whatever I want, um, I mostly walk through Paris because then you see the most of it. And if you're a tourist there, try to avoid the obvious tourist traps. They're really annoying and they're not worth it. Um, it's, it's just uh, my personal opinion. I uh, rather go to places that actually interest me instead of doing that which everyone expects you to do because, I don't know, it's kind of a hollow experience um, when you go see the Mona Lisa and you don't care about paintings whatsoever, you just go there because everyone is there. And by the way, the Mona Lisa isn't really interesting at all. It's also really small and probably not the real picture. But anyway, I want to tell you about my day. I started it by going to the Paris Opera House. I'm a bit of a phantom of the opera geek, you might have noticed. So I really like this opera house. I didn't go inside, but um, I just wanted to pay the quick visit. It's a little bit of a tradition for me <laughs> to do that when I go to Paris. So um, I was there. And as always, when I'm in a city and there's a building that I really want to see, it's under construction. So that I can't take any pretty pictures of it. It's a bit of a curse, I guess. Anyway, um, so very close to the Paris Opera House, uh, look, Palais Garnier it is, is the studio of Chanel actually, so I went to see that. And again, in the street, massive construction area, half the thing was completely blocked. And when I was there, what was a little weird, um, they had mannequins with clothes in the windows, but they had the shutters down. Oh, I think there was some kind of net fabric in front of the mannequin, so you couldn't see properly what they were wearing. You could just see shadowy hints. So you can see that there's something there, but you don't get to see it. I don't know what the effect of that's supposed to be. But anyway, I saw the, which I think is the studio. They said it on Wikipedia and I think they showed it in the documentary. I think they showed that house. But I didn't see Karl Lagerfeld too bad. Then I walked down the Seine until I got to the Louvre. Because in the Louvre they have this really exciting thing. As I said, avoid the Mona Lisa and go to the interesting stuff instead. They have the Musée... Uh, Des arts décoratifs. And in there, there is the Musée de la Mode et du Textile. And a little tip from me again when you're under 26, you get in for free. So I definitely check that out. Even if you're older, it's not that expensive. So I went in there, and unfortunately, a very uh, aggressive seeming lady told me to put away my camera so I can't show you any of the things I taped unfortunately but I brought a flyer with me I hope you can see this um, the exhibition they have is called fashioning fashion as you can see um, it's going to be there until the 14th of April so you can still go see it and they have fashion from 1700 until 1915 and yeah here's for example one jacket they show and some other clothes by the way I thought it was really interesting um, they said they had tens of thousands of pieces but the actual exhibition was actually rather small but they had um, texts 
to explain things right next to it and I thought those uh, those little explanations were really good so you could really you had a dress, a certain type of dress, and the text was highlighting something about that dress so that, and then you could observe it on the mannequin right next to it and you could walk around it. There were usually mirrors so you can see it from behind. It was a really well done exhibition, even though it wasn't very big. And what astounded me the most was how tiny those people were. Because uh, when you see it in the catalogue of a museum, and you see all these dresses and you're like, oh, I would fit in that. No, you wouldn't, unless you're 150. Um, those dresses are really tiny because the people were then were way smaller than they are nowadays. We tend to forget that. Um, also, courses and stuff, you could make people even more tiny. <laughs> um, so anyway, if you want to go there or if you can't go there but you want to see the clothes, you can purchase the catalogue and I'm going to put a link to the... Uh, to the website of the museum somewhere in the description box. It's in the description box. Don't ask me in the comments, please. I put so many information in the description boxes and no one ever reads it. I'm doing all this work and no one appreciates it. Anyway, so this was a really, really interesting thing that I did and I really loved it and I can only recommend this exhibition because you can be so close to clothing that's over 200 years old and that was actually the first time I ever got to do that. It's fascinating. It's really fascinating. There also is another fashion museum, at least in theory, in Paris that is probably worth checking out but I can't tell because my curse kicked in. I got there. It's uh, called the Palais Galleria. It's not so far away. I'd say it's 20 minutes walk if you walk really slowly so you can definitely see both at the same day and uh, this museum is called uh, Musée de la Mode et du Costume I suppose it's good I tried to check the website but the website isn't very well made the other websites made way better unfortunately and um, well I got there and it was under construction so I couldn't go inside It's the thing that happens with me. Anyway, at the end of the day, um, I ended up at Notre Dame because Notre Dame is another place where a novel is set that I really like to read, which would be The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And um, yeah, that's how I ended my day with lots of tourists. There's a big line, by the way, when you want to go inside. there for hours and not get inside or up but the view is really good so I'd definitely try that and it's such a nice church the last thing I want to talk about is uh, my little souvenir that I brought myself um, along the Seine you get these little green boxes where people are trying to say you antiques so I couldn't resist when I found this one Wait, I'm going to remove the wrapper. So, um, they sell original prints from around 1900s. I think someone got their hands on some old fashion prints because uh, back then you'd buy those in magazines and I think there must be quite a lot left. You can buy one page for 20 bucks, which is ridiculous, but I guess they can. So I found this one man who was selling them for six bucks and um, his ones were actually the prettiest. You had to walk a little while and you were almost uh, almost out of that area where they even sell this stuff. And there was this man and I saw this and I had to have it. It's gorgeous. I love those Edwardian gowns. They are so elegant. And it was only six bucks and there's something on the other side too. I didn't see that at first. Um, he had framed it as a picture and I'm going to put it on my wall with the other prints. And um, you can tell he just uh, cut this out of some old-fashioned magazine that he got. They're really pretty. I think this is my new precious. Yeah! 
Anyway, if you're in Paris and you're interested in these fashion prints, I definitely recommend digging through them because sometimes you can find a little treasure. Like this. So pretty. It's so... Room with a view with Helena Bonham Carter. That's what I have to think of. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you go to Paris, maybe check out the fashion museums and uh, the fashion prints that you can buy because it's really interesting. And Paris really has a lot to offer in that sense. Fashion and culture and all these kind of things. Anyway, uh, that was what I wanted to share with you people. And that's it.